Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today's Thursday thought is on economic disparity. I'm going to start off by reading a scripture from the book of Alma. The people of the church, in other words, Christians, began to be lifted up in the pride of their eyes and to set their hearts upon the riches and the vain things of the world, that they began to be scornful one towards another, and they began to persecute those that did not believe according to their own will and pleasure. There began to be great contentions among the people of the church. Yea, there were envyings and strife and malice and persecutions and pride. The wickedness of the church was a great stumbling block to those who did not belong to the church or the body of Christ. And thus the church began to fail in its progress. Yea, Alma saw great iniquity among the people, some lifting themselves up with their pride, despising others, turning their backs upon the needy and the naked and those who were hungry and those who were athirst and those who were sick and afflicted. I think that this is a very eye-opening scripture because it teaches us the vanities of this world and that we as Christians are not immune to them. As the church, as the body of Christ, it is our duty to take care of others, to do everything we can to help those in need. It's part of our oath in the fellowship to mourn with those that mourn. And with that comes the blessing of having joy with those that have joy. But that's more than just thoughts and prayers. That's more than just, oh, that person. Mm. It has to be an action. Love is an action verb. If we are going to love people, we have to do something about that or with that, however you want to say that. And that means reaching out to those that are the most vulnerable, the most needy. I heard from a brother recently who said that he had to leave a particular group because they were focusing too much on the oppressed. And so because of that, they weren't allowing him to express himself in the way that he desired. And, you know, I, I understand that. And I accept him where he is. At the same time, I accept the group he left where they are. Because isn't that our duty as Christians to be there for one another? The most vulnerable, most vulnerable among us are those that need our love the most. Because when we give them our love, that's literally the light, of, the light of Christ, the love of God shining through us into their lives. That is the Christian message. And when we're not doing that, that's when the church isn't being built. It says right here, it becomes a stumbling block, a great stumbling block. Because they don't understand. They say, hey, you're supposed to be a Christian. Jesus did all these great things. And you think that helping the poor is somehow wrong? Jesus didn't backbite, and here you are backbiting. Jesus said to give to those that thirst, and you're not giving to those that are thirsty? And yes, it's wrong. They shouldn't judge us as Christians. We're all human beings. We all make mistakes. But at the end of the day, they don't have that light. They haven't felt that love of God in their hearts yet. So they don't have anything to compare it to except the things that they've seen with their eyes. The scriptures say that by their fruits ye shall know them. Do these sound like Christian fruits? To lift ourselves up with pride, debasing others, turning our backs on the needy and the naked and those that are hungry and thirsty and sick and afflicted? No. Those are the very people we are called to help. So when we see the marginalized, when we see the oppressed, when we see those that are economically challenged, how can we give of ourselves a little more? Homeless people can't carry around food. So you can't just go to the grocery store and buy them a bunch of, you know, a gallon of milk and a couple of loaves of bread. What are they going to do with it? We have to give them cash. And what they do with it beyond that is entirely up to them. I've heard so many people say, I don't give money to the homeless because they're just going to buy alcohol and drugs. So, you're going to stop blessings from God in your life because of what someone else might or might not do with money that you're going to give them? 
Love people. Assist them. Help them. Don't judge them. This whole idea of a class society where we have different layers of classes, that's, that's not God's plan. That's this world. And when we get to the point to where we are a truly Christian nation, world, whatever you want, however you want to address it, we will know that we are truly Christian. Because our children will be fed. I hear people saying, don't feed kids in schools. We shouldn't even have them in schools in the first place. That's a waste of money. Is that a Christian concept to not feed hungry children and to not educate people? No. Of course not. And of course, society is going to do better when people are fed and educated. When people's needs are met, they're more likely to become those that help society. And guess what? If they're part of the 2% that doesn't, that's fine. We love them where they are anyway. Jesus died for everyone's sins. So why can't we help those in need, even if they put themselves there? The world will always tell us, take a little more for yourself. Think a little bit more about your own needs. The Lord's message is simple. Think a little bit less about yourself, a little bit more about someone else. That's what Jesus did. If we're disciples of Christ, that's what we'll do too. So, yes, I do believe that economic disparity is a sin. Because it goes against the gospel of love. It goes against the law of love. So once again, I am going to ask you, it's part of my Thursday thought, how can you love a little more? How can you give a little more? How can we lift people out of poverty a little faster? That's my question, my message, my Thursday thought, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.